Welcome to Talking Heads on USA Global TV, starring the one and only wonderful Dr. Jacqueline. It's a prestigious place where world-class influencers and experts meet, and where you'll find the most trusted advisors and coaches for all things in life and business. Visit usaglobaltv.com to sign up for our newsletter, get the value you need, and be first in line to learn about events and giveaways and other valuable content. Connect with us. Email Dr. Jacqueline at usaglobaltv.com to talk about how you can become part of USA Global TV. That's USA Global TV, where the doctor is always in. Hello, everyone, and welcome to USA Global TV and radio. I'm Dr. Jacqueline Kerbeck. I'm the president, founder, and chief listening officer here at our network, where we currently have 29 live broadcasts each week. Our show today is Aging Gracefully with Humor. And who doesn't want to have a few laughs about some of the things that happen to us as we're getting older? I just shared backstage that I got my first letter from the Social Security Administration, and I said, okay, that's right. Next week, I'm 50. Nine and a half. Yay, I'm still here. So let's have a celebration. We've got a great guest today. Let's welcome the star of our show, Kathy Fulton. Kathy, come on out. Good morning. Hello. How are you? Hello. Good morning. Good morning. I'm doing well. Thanks. How are you? I'm doing good. Hanging good. in there. Good. I missed the memo about fall. Today's uh, first day of fall. You're dressed appropriately. I'm still in summer attire. So. <laughs> Well, we're, you know, I think, I think tomorrow is going to be like our first really crisp day. So I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I'm ready to, you know, pull out some warmer clothes to wear, you know, just, just wear different stuff. Yeah. Are you someone who likes all the seasons? Yeah. Oh yeah. I really do. I think I like the winter clothes more than the summer clothes, but that's, I don't know. I don't know why I do. Um, but I, I think I also like winter more than I do summer. I don't know why. Are you a skier? Oh, absolutely not. No, okay. <laughs> no. Scared. And and it's so funny because I was thinking about that this morning. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm scared to death of heights. And speaking of skiing, just to tell you how much I'm not a skier, a few years ago, we went to um, Whistler because Joe had won a company trip and... Um, so off we go to Whistler. We go skiing and uh, which was down the beginner slope because I'm, I'm, I'm scared of heights. Okay. So the Rockies are much different than anything I had ever encountered in my life. I, I think, the, I think Whistler, I think out West is the Rockies. I'm, I'm still in so much shock. Um, I, I don't really even know which mountains I was on. Um, anyway, um, going down the mountain. Um, so of course I fell, my ski like goes right and I'm falling like, you know, left and all these kids are like zooming past me. I'm so scared that they are going to run over me anyway. Um, long story short, um, Joe is at the base of the mountain looking at me, watching me and I, I'm I'm so petrified and so scared. I literally scoot down the rest of the mountain. You have no idea how long it takes to scoot down a mountain. So that's <laughs> that's my story. that's that's the long, very long answer to no. I am not a skier. <laughs> well, thanks for sharing that. I yes. have a similar oh, yeah. story. <laughs> I was in Vermont and uh, I am also terrified. I, I'm not a skier. So I'm like, okay, I come off that chairlift thing, which is scary in and of itself when you're like looking down. So I, you know, you automatically are going and somebody went into me and then the two of us fell and then someone came into us. It was a disaster. And right. as you know, People get as hurt. You get older, yeah, especially as we get older, I'm not taking any chances like that because you don't heal the way you used to. No, you don't. But I, I'm I'm just petrified of heights as it is. I mean, even so much so like going over a bridge. I, I've gotten to the point I can't. I, it's just it's really hard for me. And um, I just it, it's like I pray the entire time. I have to turn off the the radio. I pray the entire time I'm going over it. And 
you know, the last time I went over one, I just said, this is absolutely ridiculous. This, this could easily defeat me. And, and I'm just not, I'm just not going to let it. I'm just not. And it is, I'm sweating. I am, I can't, I, you know, and, and, and I hate it. I would give anything to be able to conquer it, but I, I just, I don't know how. And I admire people that can, you know, ski down a mountain at 90 miles an hour, people that can, you know, do, do anything relative to heights. I, I admire them because I just, I just can't, I just can't. Well, I guess we're not going to see you in a hotel glass elevator going up the side of a building anytime soon. <laughs> not unless, it's, not unless it's the only way. I, my, I can close my eyes. Just yeah. Well, the moment, the moment you said that my feet and my hands begin to sweat just, you know, yeah, yeah, that's that's a good visual, right? I, I'm I'm telling you. So anyway, <laughs> well, th listen, it's a real thing. It's real, and I, I don't know what the answer is, but we have somebody here who might be able to help us. Good, I don't I know. Hope so. I need <laughs> help. I need a lot of help. <laughs> Before we bring out Rachel, I want to spotlight you, Kathy, because people probably know you also from what's trending and your work as an interior designer. Tell us about your work in the home healthcare industry. Okay. Well, I have had my own home care agency since uh, 2013. And what we do is for the folks that want to age in place, we go into the home and we provide caregivers. And uh, some people just need us on an hourly basis, but really what we specialize in is providing um, live-in care. So that way there is around the clock care. And this is, this is great for family members because then they can go to work, they can go on vacation, they can actually have a life and know that mom or dad or their aunt or uncle, uncle are taken care of. And um, so, you know, this was all, um, the impetus was my mom had two strokes back to back. I was taking care of her couldn't really find care that I felt comfortable um, enough for her. And so I was the one doing it. And I was just like, you know what? I um, I know what people want. I know what people need. And so I got licensed and I, I started my own business. So um, if, you're, if you're one of those that is wanting to age in place and need some help, give us a call. All right. Thank you so much, Kathy. And we have a very special guest today. She actually introduced the two of us. And yes. her, her mom is a dear friend. And I just love what Rachel's doing. So Rachel's going to talk to us today about burnout because burnout affects so many of us. And you and I were just having a conversation right now about things that are uh, stressful for us. And when we get stressed, we can get burnout. I know sometimes looking at the screen after the whole week, I'm just like, wow, I can't even see right now. <laughs> I've got to get away and go for a walk and yeah. do something. So right. have you experienced burnout as well? Oh my I mean, God. It's pretty common, right? <laughs> well, yeah, probably in every facet of my life. Yeah. Personal and, yeah, and professional, you know? Yeah. And, and particularly at this time in my life. Um, so yes. So I, I could use a good, a good dose of Rachel today. Well, let's bring Rachel out. She is a burnout coach, an employee experience strategist. She's an author and she's a skincare consultant. Welcome, Rachel Bame, to the program. Hello. Hello. It's so nice to see you both. Thank you for having me. Thanks for Always coming on, Rachel. Yeah. Yes. So nice to see you. We were talking much. We love your glasses. They look great. Oh, Shout out if I can. They're the ones that do have the topper oh. changes so you can, you know, keep things fun or drop them on live television. <laughs> That's pretty cool. I didn't know that they have that where you can yeah. click on. Yeah. yeah. If anybody cool. if anybody wants their uh I have a link to get a discount on my my on a mission bio, you know, spread the love. Uh, All right. having fun, actually, that's a great segue. I know I like totally interrupted your introduction of me, but having fun is like one way you can prevent burnout. And so whether it's through like having amazing clothing, you guys always look so fabulous. You know, it's taking time to dress yourself and, and, um, you, you express yourself through that way or through funky glasses or watches or just doing cartwheels in the park, like whatever. Um, but just bringing some fun back into your life is one way to kind of, uh, help 
counter some of the causes that contribute to burnout. It's not going to cure your burnout, but it can help. Yeah. I, when you said the word fun, I was like, Ooh, what is that? But I do have fun by getting dressed up. Like we had a show the other day and I changed four different times into gowns. No one knew because you can't see it, but at least that was kind of, you know, that was kind of fun. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, no, absolutely. You gotta do what's so, good for you. When I look at you and I look at Kathy, you, you both look so calm and radiant. You don't look like you're stressed, but we were just talking. We all get stressed out. We all feel burnout. What does that look like, Rachel? Uh, well, you know, I'm going to give my, my, my normal answer first, which everyone hates was, which is it depends because anything with human beings, you know, depends on the context that we're talking about. And, um, you know, I will give a more detailed answer and I'm going to try to keep it where it's not a science class. Right. But so essentially, I mean, we, we throw the word burnout a lot, but burnout is a very specific phenomenon. Um, and so when we say I'm super stressed, I'm super tired, I'm so overwhelmed, oh my God, that doesn't necessarily mean we actually are burnt out. It Even if we're saying I'm so stressed and overwhelmed, I'm burnt out. Um, so burnout is actually when you are experiencing in high frequency, like, so if you think about it, like on a scale of like zero to 10, if you're like, eight, nine, 10, a lot for a long time on three things, which are, then you're, then you're burnt out. And those three things are feelings of energy depletion or exhaustion. So when we're just, oh my God, like, I just don't even try to get me off the couch right now. Um, or emotional exhaustion, right? You just like, um, somebody told me that, you know, their, their give a bleep is broken. Um, that might be emotional exhaustion or physical exhaustion. Um, the second is increased mental distance from your job. So feelings of negativism towards your job, cynicism, um, in, you know, sciencey terms, we might say depersonalization and then reduced professional efficacy, which is just a big way of saying, you don't feel like you're good enough for this. You don't feel like you've accomplished anything. Um, you know, why am I even here? I suck. Um, so you might be feel if you're feeling on that high end scale for a long period of time, all three of those things, then technically you have burnt burnout. Um, and I don't like I think that's helpful to a point to understand. But at the same time, if you are feeling even any of those things, we all know that that can take a toll on your mental and physical health. And so I think what's really important is to have this conversation to say, hey, even if you're not technically burnt out yet, there's still things that you can and should do so that you don't ever get there. Um, and so things that we can chat about today, you know, depending on what you think your listeners would love to hear is, you know, how does that look as we get older and what can we do to prevent or correct, correct burnout um, or any sort of feeling of stress and overwhelm? Thank you, Rachel. Um, I'm going to go over to Kathy. I just have one comment. I was listening intently for those three things. And the only one that could really resonate with me was the first one, which I think yeah. because I'm standing here, you know, 29 plus hours and I'm so tired. But what I've noticed is if I drag myself to the gym, I'm having mm -hmm. better workouts than I've ever had. But mentally, I don't want to go there, but I have to go and then I feel better. So does that qualify or no? It, it doesn't, um, not efficient, not technically, it would Yay. just be straight. Yeah. Yay. Um, it would simply be, okay, you're, you have energy depletion. You're, you're feeling tired. You know, you need to unplug and regroup, re-energize. And I think you hit the nail on the head with that. Oftentimes people like clients will ask me, well, how do I get motivated? How do I stay motivated? And I think we've talked in other, you know, other times where motivation is sort of a myth. Um, or better put, what we think about, what we think we know about motivation, we're wrong. So we often sit around and wait for motivation to come to us. Um, and then we think once we get it, it'll just stay there. It is not a constant state. And actually, motivation typically follows action. So Dr. Jacqueline, you may have noted that, noticed when, as you said, sometimes you're feeling tired and just like, oh, I just don't want to go work out but I know I have to. And so you quite admirably 
get up and, and go do something, some type of movement. And I imagine that after a little bit, as you start doing it, you're feeling better, you're feeling a little motivated, that energy is coming. And then afterwards you feel great. And, um, and then you're so proud of yourself for doing it. But you have to remind yourself that that's going to happen because at the start of it, you were just not feeling that, quote, motivation to do it. Yes, that's that's exactly right. I was actually playing the air guitar and dancing all around the gym to me. So I was like, awesome. yeah, I'm having a great time. Kathy, over to you. What are your thoughts? Wow. Well, what I'm wondering is how did you decide to become a burnout coach? What what happened? Did something happen in your life or? Oh, yeah, I got burnt out. <laughs> so you understand. I totally get it. You know, oftentimes coaches, whether it's, you know, like fitness and health, like nutrition, health, like we, we, we get into it because we need to try to correct something of ourselves, right? right. Or, you know, those of us doing kind of doctoral programs or, or beyond or like, you know, the research is me search joke where we're like, well, we noticed this, this problem we were having. So we thought we'd look in to see if like anyone else is experiencing this or if it's just us. Um, and so I didn't know that it was burnout at the time. And at some points, you know, I was doing the same thing. I was like, oh my God, I think I'm burnt out. But I was really just kind of tired. I was grinding. I was not setting proper boundaries. And, and um, but, but I've also had moments where I was kind of feeling disenfranchised, if you will, from a workplace or feeling incapable or not good enough, um, that kind of which I think is a little bit different than imposter syndrome, but you could, if that resonates with you, you know, if you're feeling again, all three of those things, then yeah, that's technically burnt out. I've certainly experienced all three of them at once and I've experienced them all three of them separately. Mm -hmm. um, but I think the biggest thing, Kathy, that I noticed was, I mean, this just goes to everything I do. Like, why does, why does work have to suck and kill us? I just don't think that it does. Like, why are people having to choose between making a living and living their life? You know, um, a fellow consultant of mine put it so beautifully, and this is not a direct quote by any means, but he said, you know, I didn't wait my whole life or search my whole life to find my partner, my wife, to get this beautiful house, to have these amazing kids, to never see any of them, you know, or spend time in that home because I was so busy trying to do the things to pay for them to have a good life. Like I, I was never around. Um, and I just don't feel like that is a sustainable way to live and is increasingly no longer acceptable to people. Um, and so where that ties in with burnout, you know, wherever we are on the age spectrum is like, you can choose to stop. And that's something that I help people do. I've worked in really bad workplaces. I've worked in really amazing workplaces. Um, I've seen and experienced a lot and I've worked with a lot of people to help them make those corrections in their life so that they can thrive personally and professionally at the same time. Well, I, I mean, I, I hear you on, uh, in a lot of what you just said, I guess my question is, and, and, and this is just my opinion. Not everyone yeah. shares shares the same opinion, but um, I believe we are full throttle in a recession. And I mean, you know, just to pour pour gas on the fire. I mean, you know, I can't get out of the grocery store for under three hundred dollars. Gas prices, interest rates just went up again, um, and it is. I mean, then oh joy, winter's coming, and they're saying that the um, heating bills are going to be astronomical. So I can hardly wait to open those bills. Um, so, I mean, I, I hear what you're saying and, and I, I share the same thoughts. I mean, I would love to work less to be able to enjoy more, mm -hmm. but when I have, I, I'm, I'm just a very, I would say pragmatic, realistic person. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm never the type of person that's going to say, Oh, it'll all just you know, work itself out. Um, right. and I, I can't operate that way. I, I think more power to the people that can, I, I cannot. And I, this old dog will not learn a new trick. I can assure you. Um, so, um, you know, more and more people aren't able to retire because their 401ks suck. I mean, it's just, so I guess my question is, 
how do you mix reality with people that don't want to work as much? I well, mean, I'm so, yeah, I'm really glad that you said that because no one is saying, honestly, working less is not going to solve burnout. Like that's, that's the thing. It's not, often we want to think in black and white. Burnout is a problem that needs to be solved by the employee and the workplace. So it the problem, one of the things, there's so many things that I want to, that I want to highlight because you just, that was just a real, I'm really glad that you said all of that. The first is taking a step back. Like if we are looking at just the individual, the, the sol solving burnout does not mean you need to quit your job and go live in a yurt somewhere. Like that's not realistic. I mean, if that's what, what lights your soul on fire, go do it. I am not passing judgment. That's not going to light my soul on fire and I don't want to be burnt out. So what it is, is, okay, what's actually, what do you need to do to live? Like, how do you want to live? What do you need to do to have that? And it might be, you don't quit your job. Everything stays the same, except that we've reframed the situation in your mind. We've made certain trade-offs because right now in this instance, this is the world that you're going to be in. But now at least you feel better about it. We've exercised some control. So we have found the places in your life where you can make small tweaks that add up to big changes that make things more sustainable. Bigger picture, if it is real burnout, that the employers need to address the problem at the workplace level just as much as the employee needs to make steps, um, take action in their world, right? So for the employee, it's, all right, what boundaries can we set? Where can you say no? Or how can you say no? right? Where can you delegate? Little things like that. Like, do you have a vacation policy that you're actually allowed to use, encouraged to use, but you're not taking it because you are misperceiving what would happen if you took it? So there's work that we can do with that individual. But then at the workplace level, what signs is the manager sending to their employees? Are they saying, hey, you know, like we have 15 day like paid holidays or 14 paid holidays, whatever it is. And we have a two weeks vacation policy. But when anybody takes that, they're made to feel guilty. The leadership certainly never takes it. So why would they're role modeling the behavior that that they want to see? So whatever action that the, the leaders are taking, that's what the employees are going to do and follow for the most part. So the leaders never take time off or when they do, they're still working the whole time. They're sending out emails and messages and texts and slacks and all the things all day, every day, 365, right? So what signs is that signaling to the employees that are trying to set those boundaries and take care of themselves? So that's the conversation that we're having when we talk about addressing real burnout. When I coach, and that's what I do with the, like at the organizational level, when I look at, when I work with an individual, they, unless they're the entrepreneur, the solopreneur, which is kind of slightly separate. Um, we really can only work on what they have that control over. And then the rest is, okay, how do we reframe certain things in your mind so that you feel, you don't feel guilty for setting boundaries. You know what your priorities are. You know how to enforce your boundaries and you know what you need to do to build your resilience up enough so that it can counter these demands. And then the other piece, because we are talking about aging, is the answer may be leaving a toxic workplace at the end of the day. And that's not the call that I'm going to tell somebody to make. That's something that they have to decide for themselves with their family if they have one. Um, but it doesn't mean they should put themselves in, in the poorhouse because they needed to quit a job, right? Um, it may mean, okay, it's going to take a little bit, but I'm going to build my exit strategy so that I can find a job that pays again back to that lifestyle and my values and my priorities. But I know the end is coming because I'm going to start looking now. And now I have new criteria to frame that search. I hope that makes sense. I know I kind of went off on a little bit, but. Yeah. 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 I think that makes sense. And you touched on something right there at the end. Uh, what you shared really resonates with me because I was in corporate for my whole career up until 2020. I know Kathy's had her own businesses for a very long time, but as a business owner, I have never worked more than I'm working. I mean, my whole life is about working. And if I'm not working, 
there's no one else doing the work. So I don't feel burnt out, but I do feel that ultimate pressure that some of the, that late work-life balance is totally out of balance. And I feel like it's for the greater good of where I'm going, as opposed to when I was in corporate, if I felt burnt out, there were things that I could do for fun, you know, for entertainment. And now I, I don't have that anymore. So I don't know, what are your thoughts when it comes to entrepreneurship? Entrepreneurs, we're just fun little weird people. Um, we, you know, I'm actually looking at entrepreneurs and and hybrid entrepreneurs for my dissertation. And, you know, there's, you know, without going too much into all the things, like what really matters here is is the entrepreneurship can build your well being and deteriorate your well-being. It can do both. And so, you know, we don't know yet like which one it does most and it's going to depend on the person and the stage of life. And so the important thing is, and this is why I believe it was Mark Cuban, um, but I'm not positive on that, but recently said, it's a terrible idea to follow your passions. And, and it was, it was, he was on a Freakonomics podcast. So he said it was a terrible idea to follow your passions. And when I first heard that teaser, I thought he was going to be because if you follow your passions, oftentimes that will lead to burnout, right? As an entrepreneur, because you're just like, you can't separate yourself from the business and you're always going and you, but in that context, what he was saying was follow your skills, your abilities, because if you're not, if you may be passionate about being a professional, like figure skater, but you're a terrible figure skater, right? You need to go to your skills. Um, And I think there's some, there's some validity there. But I wish he had addressed a little bit more of like what happens when entrepreneurs follow their passions to the point that it burns them out, Um, because that is also something that we are talking about in that space for entrepreneurs. You know, they're lucky and they're not lucky because they do have that full control. You are the employer and the employee. Um, And so that's really where you need somebody to come in and help you look at your priorities, look at your values and figure out better ways to work. It's not to say the work isn't going to get done, but how can we make the work get done better? Thank you. Thank you. I wanted to add in, uh, I watch Shark Tank with my mom almost every night and you hear a lot on the show that they'll ask the, the entrepreneur, how much time are you spending in the business? So you have another job, so you're not fully invested. If you're not doing this 24 seven, you know, then you're not really fully engaged and I'm not going to invest. So it's kind of like, I don't know. I don't know what the answer is, but I can see how being fully engaged, you can get burnt out. So to your point, I guess you have to do little things along the way to prevent that from happening. Well, I mean, are you fully engaged or like full, to me, fully engaged doesn't mean you don't sleep and you don't eat and you like run yourself into an early grave. Because then honestly, like who gives a, sorry, who cares about what is going on with your business? Because you're dead, right? Like taking care of yourself is your job, is part of your job, whether you are an employee or the business owner. It's part of your job. If you show up to a networking event and we all know like word of mouth is everything for any business. If you show up to a networking event and you look ragged because you have not been taking care of yourself, but you're engaged, you're fully on. Do you really think people are going to trust you to take care of their business? Because you you were showing up as if you're not taking care of yourself. You are the calling card for your brand, whether it is your personal brand as an employee a your personal brand or your business brand as the the entrepreneur. So I just don't I personally and others working in a space they're trying to show like change the narrative. This idea of sleep when you're dead does is is stupid. When you're dead you're dead. And and I'm not trying to go into other talks of of the afterlife, but what I mean is that Feelings of energy depletion, exhaustion, just that alone, they decrease your creativity. They shorten your lifespan. They increase the number of mistakes you're going to make. 
they cause a ripple effect so that your you know, it leads to crazy cravings. Um, you're craving more junk food, for example. So you're going to gain weight, which means you're probably not going to feel confident enough to go to the gym, which means you're going to gain more weight, which means you're going to start feeling like poop, which means you're not going to have the energy, which means what? How are you going to run a business or build a career when you don't have anything to give? And that's, that's the point. It doesn't mean you can't work hard and work well and hit those goals, but it's just saying... You may have thought you were doing that before, and the only way to do it was to work 24-7 for 20 years and then chill. That actually was not the right way to go. And so it's taking a look at all of the literature, all of the research, and saying there's a better way. Let's figure out what that is for you. Wow. A lot to consider there. Thank you. Kathy, what are your thoughts? No, I mean, I I, uh, I agree, and I, and I hear you. Um, but so... But moving on, you also do, because I, want, I wanted to make sure we got this in for you, um, is you are a skincare consultant. Yes, I am. And so, you know, I mean, I know that women particularly are always wanting to age gracefully. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, how did, how did you get into this? Uh, I wanted to fix myself. <laughs> Um, and, and I, I don't, I mean, I, I said the word fix cause it's like a cute little line or whatever. Um, it was the first verb that came to me, but for the record, I don't think anybody out there needs fixing, right? It's just something we say about ourselves, right? Like, God, if I could just fix this, but I just want to make a point in saying, I don't, I don't think anyone out there needs fixing. We all have things that we want to improve, that we want to highlight, that we want to diminish, um, but the goal is always, at least for me and the people that I work with and support, how can we be our true, fullest, most vibrant self, right? And oftentimes what we're seeing just to bring it from the burn, like just to give a nice bridge from the burnout and the stress that we're talking about to the skincare, your skin is going to, it's going to tell all your secrets. So, you know, for me, what got me first into it is I had good skin pretty much most of my life. Um, and it was, I struggled a lot with my weight for a really long time and, but I always had the pretty face. So when suddenly I was getting adult acne and then starting to see kind of a little bit of like sun damage and signs of aging and like stress was showing on my skin. And I'm like, oh my God, but my face, it was not full blown, like my identity crisis, but I don't know if you, anybody else can relate to that, where the thing they've always counted on, whether it was vis, a visible thing or not, suddenly started to go. And you just sort of were like, I, that was the thing I always counted on. And I was very fortunate that I was able to find a solution for that adult acne, for that sun damage, and then really just started to see tremendous results. And I was telling everybody about it. And... Then I was, I realized I was approached and I realized that like I could turn this into a really awesome, what started as a side gig, like so many people are doing now, um, leveraging e-commerce. And so I, I kind of tacked that on as a separate entity, but it really started as just, okay, I need a solution that's going to work that I can count on. I can take the guesswork out because I think we have all had that where we go into the store, whatever store it is, drugstore, um, grocery store, department store, you know, now Instagram and TikTok and all the things. And we're like, oh my God, what is going to solve my problem? What is going to solve my problem? And we're by, you know, spending hundreds of dollars on these concoctions that just become this product graveyard. We're trying to learn all the ingredients and figure it out. And I don't know about you, but chemistry was not my thing. Um, and we just need a simple solution. Are we just looking for a simple solution that's not going to break the bank to your point earlier? That's going to live up to the promises, you know, rather than just some pretty bottle. And I found that I found people needed that. And so that's sort of how I got started was just another way to be a problem solver for people. Because when you look in the mirror and you love how you feel, you love what you see staring back at you, that changes how you go about your day. Right. I think we all know that. Right. So it's going to make you feel more confident. It's going to, you know, you're going to ask the guy out or you're going to tell the guy no, or you're going to go to the, go for that promotion or go for that public speaking event or like hop on a live television, right? Without some filters, 
you're going to do all of these things that you wouldn't necessarily feel the confidence to do otherwise. Um, and I don't know one person that does not want to feel better in their skin and look and feel their best, especially as we get older. Yeah. Rachel, I totally can relate to what you're saying. And you and I've had this conversation before, but um, you talked about your face and that is your calling card to the world. And, and I, I know for me, I was diagnosed with facial eczema mm -hmm. and I just thought my entire life was I, I actually would show pictures uh, maybe <laughs> some other time, but my entire face gets all these scales on it. And it's like, wow, what do I have now? Because that's what everybody sees and what it does to your self-confidence. I just had to inject myself with Dupixent yesterday because it was starting to come back. But I think a lot of it, whether it's um, generational, I think it's also environmental. And I think it's also brought out by stress. What are your thoughts? Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, look, your, your lifestyle, I'm going to take a step back because I'm going to go, I'm going to answer your question, but just kind of give you a little bit of context around my answer. So when I was looking specific, when I was doing more of nutrition and fitness coaching, um, which I still do to a point, but it's it's kind of again phrase framed in that that burnout. And so I do share some of this knowledge with my skincare clients as well because I want them to be be empowered consumers and really get the absolute best results. So I loved what one of my um, coaches who, when I was going through the program, what the certification was was saying, which is nutrition is sending a signal to your body. It is a message to your body telling it what you expect of it. And I share that to say, I think your whole lifestyle is that. So are you sending your, what are you, what messages are you sending to your body and your mind that, of what you expect from it? Um, through your food, through your drink, through your stress, through your sleep, through your whatever. Um, are you sending it messages of, we are gonna be top performers, we are gonna crush it, we're gonna chill, we're gonna have some fun, but we got big goals and we're here to play. Or are you sending it like, I don't really care about you because like, I don't want to pick on a certain food, but like, you know, the chips and the fried food and the thing all the time, not just every once in a while, but all the time. And like, we don't really need to sleep and I'm just going to kind of treat you like poop because I don't really care. We're just going to grind it out. What are you trying to tell? Like what messages are you sending for how you want it to perform? Because what you feed it literally and figuratively is what it's going to respond to and do. And your skin, again, is going to kind of tell your tell those secrets. Um, now, and, and yes, environment, humidity, seasonal changes. I'm working with my clients on how to shift from summer to fall and fall to winter and winter to spring and then back to summer. Um, your environment plays a part. Your topicals play a part. So what you're, the products that you're using, um, your nutrition plays a part. But nutrition, I will say, just plays a part to a point. So much like, you know, let's say you want to eat an apple. You're like, oh, love this apple. Um, I actually have apples upstairs. So I kind of wish I had a prop. But, you know, I love this apple. I'm going to eat this apple. And I really would prefer that this apple just kind of go right to my 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 booty. Um, but the, the cookie that I'm going to eat later, if that could just not go anywhere, that would be great. Or, oh, I'm feeling a little, um, like, dull. I, I heard I need some antioxidants on my skin to make it fresh and glowy. So I'm going to eat some, some blueberries and some other antioxidant rich foods. And if those could only go to my skin, that would be awesome. Unfortunately, that's not how it works. Um, same with water. Like water is important. It is going to add hydration to your skin, but not in the way that we all think. And so, you know, it's going to serve your kidneys and your other organs first. Um, you cannot target like spot treat your body with nutrition much like you cannot spot treat with with your workouts right you can do to a point anyways i should say um i hope that makes sense i know there's a, little, a few wacky analogies in there as per usual with me um but the point is that it really is a collective approach you need the topicals but yes your lifestyle and your exposures play a role and your stress plays a role as well Thank you so much for, for sharing all of that. Yeah. I know I have I, I hope that makes sense. Ask me away if it, if it did not. 
no, it, it definitely made sense. I, I just wanted to share this. This is what I usually look like. Can you uh, see it? Yeah. Thank you for being so, so honest and, and open to share that. Yeah. So I was just going to add to your point. Uh, I do intermittent fasting every day, so I don't eat yeah. for about 15 hours every day. I've cut out this, that, and the other, but yeah. sometimes it just creeps back up again. So Yeah. And, and, and just for the people that are out there that do have a diagnostic, like a clinical concern, you know, it is not to say that you're not going to see results if you take a dietary approach. Like, I don't want anyone to misconstrue with what I just said, was saying that like, oh, well, I don't need to do anything like take care. I don't like no diet is going to benefit my skin. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is that you need, you, you need to have your nutrition and your lifestyle and your topicals all together to address, to, to create certain changes. Um, it is a holistic picture. It is not one or the other. And for, you know, Dr. Jacqueline, I don't know if yours is, is related to an autoimmune. You don't have to share if you don't want to, but there is, you know, some research around different dietary interventions for conditions such as autoimmune. And so for anybody that is, you know, dealing with a clinical issue, that is really important to go talk to your doctor about and not just go off of what you've heard on, from me or from any other post anywhere, because that doctor is the person that's going to know the inner workings of you. Hopefully you're with the right doctor. <laughs> if you're not, go find someone that's going to know the inner workings of you and be able to help you with that clinical issue, um, you know, in the way that you need. Yeah. Thank you very much. And yes, I have ulcerative colitis, psoriasis, and eczema. Yay me. So um, we have time for maybe one more question or comment. I'm going to go over to Kathy. So you made a, you made a statement a few minutes ago, and I find it hard to believe, but that you had difficulty, you had a, a weight issue or you, you couldn't, I don't remember exactly what you said, but I'm like, wait a minute, there's no way. Yeah. Most people don't believe that. And, you know, uh, Dr. Jacqueline, you, you mentioned my book earlier when we were backstage that this might be a good time to throw that link out there. Um, you know, I put it in a memoir, um, not just the, the weight issue, it's, it's a larger picture, but that was certainly part of it in a way that was the manifestation. So, or how my, my inner struggles manifested themselves, because I think something that will, most people will tell you, um, you know, those that are dealing with an addiction and those that are dealing with a weight issue and other people can argue another time about how, you know, whether or not those are the same, but, um, and I think everything is on a continuum, right? So there's a point where it becomes an addiction, but before that, it's just a problem. Um, the, I was overweight, I was very underweight, and then I was like a, a healthy middle, but I still had challenges to work through. And then finally, I'm at a place where I eat what I want, I eat when I'm hungry, um, and I don't really weigh and measure anything. I make really, I make healthy choices because I'm at the point where that's actually what I want, not what I feel like I have to have, or I'm not allowed to have anything else. And so there is a degree of, of rigidity that you, you can be too lax, you can be too rigid. And then there's this like beautiful place in between. Um, so like yesterday I ate, a, I ate a whole bag of check mix, the turtle kind with the M&Ms and the peanuts and all the chocolate and stuff. And it was fabulous. Um, cool. I don't do it every day, but yesterday, I don't know. I thought I wanted some and I ate the whole bag. So things happen. Um, and I, but I was conscious about it. I was like, I'm going to enjoy this and I'm not going to beat myself up about it. And, and there was a time in my life when I would have eaten it because I was bored and I would have eaten a much bigger bag, or I was sad, or I was lonely. Um, and there was a time in my life where I could have been absolutely starving, and I would not have allowed myself to have that bag or anything in it, because it's not healthy food. And so, you know, that's just to say, Kathy, that yes, <laughs> I did have, have issues with my weight, and um, but again, it was never really about the weight or the food. It's always about what's um, an unhealthy coping mechanism 
for anxiety and lack of self-efficacy, lack of self-esteem. And thankfully, I was able to have some really wonderful people work with me throughout the years to get to a place where I could say what I'm saying now, which is that I don't see calories and points and macros when I look at food, I see food. Um, so for anyone out there that has that experience, just know you can keep going in it and you will get to that place. It will take time and patience, but it is absolutely possible. Well, well thank you so much for being so brave and sharing. Yeah. I would share pictures, but it's going to, it would take so long to find them. <laughs> they're in my book. Though. They're, they're in my book. So there is proof. There is proof. So Rachel, how do you work with your clients? Tell us about that process. Yeah. So everything starts with a complimentary consultation, um, usually about 15 to 20 minutes. And then we talk about, basically, I just want to ask a couple of questions. Um, if I could wave a magic wand. You know, I want to just get right to it. If I could wave a magic wand, what do you, what, what do you, what do you want changed? Where do you want to be? What would be it for you? Um, we go through kind of what their expectations are, whether or not they've worked with a coach before, what coaching means and looks like, because it is different from consulting. And then I share a little bit about the program. So I work with people for three month blocks. Um, and that's because what I found doing this is that people, you know, unless they've worked with me before or they've worked with coaches before, the idea of like a six month or a 12 month just seems like a little terrifying of a commitment. Um, and so I kind of re reworked everything. So that's like, hey, we're going to work together for three months. You can absolutely renew. But if you're good, you're good. Because also people are different stages in their life, right? Some people I've worked with, they're like, I really just needed that three months of motivation to get me back in gear. And they're good. And other people are like, mm, okay, we did three, but now can we do six? Because like we're peeling all sorts of onion layers <laughs> and, and we can do that. Um, we do two calls, about 40, 45 minutes every other week. So two calls a month, where a Zoom or phone, depending on people's preference. Some people want the Zoom, some people just do not at all. And then in between that though, we have, there's homework for lack of a better word. So we'll do exercises that will help you really unlock not only where you're at, but where you want to go. And then together, I'm going to guide you so that you can build that bridge between where you are and where you want to go. Um, so we have, you know, you have me via email. We have little nudges throughout that time. So you're never left alone during those two weeks. But then we'll come back together and say, what's working? What's not? How do we move forward? And I found that that just really fits people's schedules better and gives them time and space to reflect on what we've talked about. Whereas before when we were doing it every week, it was just, it was a little too much, especially for people that are, we're coaching through burnout. They already have so much going on. Um, so this is just a much more, a, a much simpler way to integrate those changes into their daily life. Oh, Dr. Jacqueline, yes. yeah. Uh, I said, yeah, I really like the process. Uh, it's very simple and succinct. So thanks for sharing that. How do people purchase your book? Uh, so the best way is hit that link right there, or I have my kind of one hit wonder link, which is on a mission bio slash Rachel Bain. And from there, all sorts of fun things. Um, so if you're a big audiobook fan, you can even join my Libby app group. Um, Facebook group. It's for fans of the, the Libby app, I'm obsessed with audiobooks. Um, you know, you can get your fun glasses. You can get the book. You can get your weekly dose of motivation and even get some skincare samples, all the things. So, you know, just hit that link and that will be the best place to kind of go find all the ways in which I might be able to support you. Fantastic. Well, thank you again for bringing so much wonderful, important information. I was really relating to what you were talking about today. And I know we'll have you back again. We'll look at some Absolutely. pictures and continue the conversation. Yeah. Thank you both so much for having me. And thank you so much for your wonderful questions. Thanks for thank coming. You. Thanks for coming. All right. We'll see you again. Bye for now. Bye. Bye. Well, she was great as always. And yeah. Uh, we have to actually get over to the other studio. I'm just looking at the time. We've got our next show coming up. Kathy, what's the best way for people to reach you and who would you like to contact you? Well, anyone that needs uh, home care services for 
an elderly parent uh, or a loved one, um, you can contact me. You can just call me 703-402-1172 or feel free to email me. I'm at Kathy Fulton 1965 at gmail.com. All right. Thank you very much. Kathy and I are saying goodbye for now. We'll be right back with what's trending. Thanks again, Rachel. Hello to Diane. We'll be seeing Diane after uh, later on today. All right. Thanks again. Bye, everyone. Bye.